Graveyard Keeper is a medieval adventure RPG developed by Lazy Bear Games and Magic Cat. This game has a strong focus on the macabre as you'll manage a graveyard, perform autopsies, join a cult, and even has a little bit of cannibalism thrown in for good measure. Your story begins when you're hit by a car and you wake up in a strange land. In this new world, you've been appointed the esteemed job of graveyard keeper, but as you've left behind a wife that you're desperate to return to, you set out to find a way to return back home. In the meantime, to keep up appearances, you take on this new role as Graveyard Keeper and go along with whatever other crazy antics that seem to be playing out. As far as stories go, this one is quite different and interesting to say the least. You'll soon discover that the graveyard you're now in charge of is in a terrible state and is in need of some serious repairs. Thus begins one of the first main quests of the game, which will have you learning some new skills to begin crafting headstones, repairing broken ones, and adding some basic decorative items. Not only are you now in charge of the graveyard, but it's now also your job to prepare the dead and bury them. You'll conduct autopsies, but not for the reasons that you might think. Being in a bit of a tight spot, you'll harvest organs for some quick cash and to use in your crafting, and cooking. You'll need to be careful though as too much harvesting can affect the body's morality standing which will negatively impact the quality of your graveyard after you bury them. Don't worry, that part confused me as well. Following on from this you'll soon learn some new skills, learning more efficient ways to harvest organs and new methods of disposing of the dead, aside from dumping bodies in the very convenient river located right next to the graveyard. No judgement here. Once you have the graveyard to an acceptable state, you'll be able to open up the church and conduct sermons, bringing in some more money as well as learning some new skills such as writing. Alongside your newfound graveyard duties, there is much more to the world around you. A town located just to the east of your new home has shops and some notable characters where you can do quests to get to know them and increase your relationship. Outside of your home and the local town, you'll find quite a large world to explore, including some woods up north, swamps out to the west, and ruins to the east. You'll find many interesting characters and locations as you explore, usually accompanied by some unusual but enjoyable quests. The quests in Graveyard Keeper are nothing to sneeze at. Whereas in other games they might take you a few hours to complete, some quests in this game can take you most of your entire playthrough. A few seemingly simple quests that you get right near the beginning could have you only making decent progress 20 hours later into the game, although that could just be me. In a way this is great as it encourages you to level up, explore and go to new areas and just generally experience the game. In other ways it's not so great as you feel like you're never quite making enough progress and the game just in general feels really difficult. One of the biggest aspects to this game would be the crafting and skill system. It's very complex and extensive and even overwhelming at times. You'll have several different categories to skill up in, including cooking, smithing, farming and anatomy to name a few. You'll gain points from almost every action there is to do in the game and you can use these points to unlock new abilities. If you're wondering if there is combat in Graveyard Keeper, there most certainly is, and it's mostly limited to a dungeon crawler area, although you can come across the odd monster out in the wild. This dungeon crawler aspect will take some time for you to unlock, but once you do, will involve several quests and also is just a great way to collect resources. Graveyard Keeper has three DLCs available, Game of Crones, Stranger Sin and Breaking Dead. Breaking Dead is the simplest and cheapest of the three DLCs. It's basically a small add-on that allows you to have worker zombies that can perform some of the grindier tasks for you, such as chopping wood, mining, and farming. While basic, it can be incredibly helpful as you will need a lot of resources throughout your gameplay, and it is pretty cheap, usually just a few dollars if you get it on special. Game of Crones is a larger DLC and slightly more pricey. This DLC adds a whole new storyline involving vampires and a group of people hiding from the Inquisition in a camp. 
you'll need to investigate these vampire attacks and also help the people with their camp by building tents, kitchens, wells, and more. The third and final DLC is called Stranger Sin. This DLC has you managing a tavern while also adding in various side quests involving the talking skull that you'll meet earlier on in the game. I was most excited for this DLC as I absolutely love tavern management, but this was probably my least favourite DLC. The tavern management part is very basic and honestly I just found it kind of boring. There's really not that much to upgrade or build in your tavern. It also takes a lot of grinding to make beer or wine to stock your tavern and you also only need food for special events. I didn't really think it was worth the price considering the cost of the other main DLCs and the content you got. Everything in Graveyard Keeper comes together to form this beautifully creepy and macabre game from the art style, the soundtracks, sound effects and menu styles, everything. It all ties in together perfectly with the quests and general nature of the game to give you a dark but very delightful game. The world is beautifully detailed as well with lots of diverse areas making it quite interesting to explore. I also found the menu systems very easy to understand and navigate which personally is very important to me. I like that there is always something to do in Graveyard Keeper, whether that be working on your graveyard, one of the many quests, or exploring the world. I never got that feeling in a video game where you're just at a complete loss for what to do next. While there may be a lot of things to keep you occupied, it's not always clear on how you're meant to accomplish these tasks. I had to do quite a bit of googling during my time playing this game as I found I got stuck quite often. Some tutorials would have been very helpful. I can also imagine many people who are wanting a more casual game experience quitting before they learn how to do everything in this game, which is a shame. Graveyard Keeper is also incredibly grindy. You'll need a large amount of resources as crafting is needed for almost every single quest and the more you progress, the more complicated the crafting gets, so the more resources you'll need. The quest log that keeps track of your quests isn't the best and in fact barely even exists as to find out what you need to do for your quest, you actually have to go to the character menu to see what characters have given you things to do. This quest log of sorts does not include crucial information that you may have been told when you first got the quest, so if you miss it or forget, you can easily get stuck on what to do. Similar to Stardew Valley, Graveyard Keeper has quite a deep and interesting world where a seemingly simple game opens up to this incredibly complicated world where everything kind of links together. Because of this, I found it very rewarding to progress and while tough to get there, it was very satisfying and I felt very accomplished to beat many of the larger quests. I can only assume Graveyard Keeper isn't as popular due to its darker nature, which can understandably turn some people off but I assure you the world is still very alive and fun to experience. If you enjoy life simulation genres, love a good fixer-upper type game where you can upgrade areas and don't mind a bit of a darker game, then this is the one for you. Thank you so much for watching my channel, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and please leave a like and comment if this review has helped you in any way and I will see you in the next video. Bye!